What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we're installing the Maz Designs cheat code on our SCX24 comp build. So Christopher Walken has this awesome speech in the movie Pool Hall Junkies, where he talks about a lion being the king of the jungle. And the premise of the speech is that every once in a while, the lion has to get up and remind the jackals who he is. He has to remind everyone that he is still the king of the jungle. And I bring that up because I was reminded of that speech when I revisited the SCX24 comp build. I'm reminded just how good this thing is. It is by far the best performing rig that I have in my fleet and my best, most comprehensive build to date. And I don't feature it enough. And every time that I do, I am blown away by how well it performs compared to my other rigs. But today we're gonna see if we can make the best better. We've got our hands on a whole bunch of goodies from Maz Designs, including the carbon cheat code chassis. Now I've explored some other chassis kits as well. I've done the Warthog build. We've done a couple of Fury Tech builds, but otherwise I haven't done a lot with LCG chassis kits. So I'm really excited to try out the Maz Designs because I've seen incredible builds utilizing this chassis. And I figured if we're going to try to upgrade the comp build even more, we might as well throw the absolute best at it. And I'm pretty confident that the cheat code from what I've seen is right up there. So we're gonna give that a shot. We're gonna swap out the MoFo RC chassis. We're gonna put the cheat code on here. I also got some links from Maz Designs we're gonna look at too. It's gonna to be fun, I'm looking forward to it. So why don't we open up the box of Maz goodies that we've got here, go over the parts and pieces that we have. Then we'll take a look at the comp build on the setup table. We'll get some baseline readings on where it is right now. We'll put it on the course so we can see this thing in action. Now I'm really excited for this. This has been a long time coming. I've been really anxious to try the cheat code chassis and I cannot wait to see how it performs in this build. So let's jump in and check it out. So let's, here's our box. Let's open it up and take a look. So first off, the presentation of this is very cool. I've got the chassis kit is stuck to the roof of the box. This is the standard cheat code kit. I got two of these actually. So here's the links. So I've got a bunch of links here. Now the links are very cool that Maz offers. These are complete kits. It comes with the steering links. It comes with all of the upper and lower links that you need and all of the hardware. These are adjustable links when you thread on the ball ends and they also have misaligned ends on purpose so that you can better fit the chassis and get smoother more efficient linkage action in these things these are nice and solid stainless steel and what's cool too is that I don't remember which kit it is Maz sells a kit called the C bolt which is C10 fronts and deadbolt rears which to me personally I feel like that is the optimal wheelbase setup for an SCX24. Now the comp build is running the Gladiator wheelbase so I did get a set of Gladiator links here as well. So I need to determine if I'm going to do the Seabolt links or leave it with the Gladiator links. I think I'm going to go with the latter because it's performing exceptionally well now with that wheelbase setup. Here's the components to our chassis kits. Like I said I got a pair of them. I got the standard cheat code and I also got the XL. The chassis rails come separately in this box and then you get the components here to build it. I love, love, love that Maz includes the magnets for the mounts. It has these super clean 3D printed magnet mounts front and back and it gives you the magnets too. So appreciate that. I got the hardware kit. It's $10 for the hardware kit and I think it's a good thing to have. It just makes assembling these chassis much easier from what I've seen on the videos. Some additional hardware. I'm assuming these go with the chassis kits. We've got some cool stickers. And here's our second chassis kit on the bottom. So this is the XL chassis kit. And if you can see, I'll take these out in a second. But if you can see how much longer the rear end of the XL is versus the standard cheat code. Now, I really wanted the XL because I run the longer wheelbase on the comp build. So I'm thinking that I'll use the XL for this and the Gladiator Lynx. That's the plan anyways. So let's take this out. There's one of the rails here. Strong, 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 strong. This is gonna be awesome. Now the cheat codes are one of the more pricey LCG chassis kits out there. The carbon chassis kit that I have here is around $95 for this kit. But we'll see when we get into this, the quality of the print and the fit and finish and the performance we get out of it. We'll see if we can make a logical determination 
whether or not it's worth it. From all the videos I've seen and the in-person builds that I've seen running this chassis, I'm very confident that it's absolutely worth it. If you're serious about your build, this is definitely a high-end chassis to consider if you want maximum performance. So I'm not going to assemble this just yet. Why don't we get the comp build on the setup table and then we'll start putting things together. All right, let's start off with the RTI here. Now I didn't build the comp rig to be a flex machine, but it does have you know, 48 millimeter shocks on it. We'll see how this does. It's also got wide axles and the negative offset wheels. It's gonna give it a lot of reach. It's a 22 on the RTI. Right, now let's do some side hill. Forty, forty-five, fifty, fifty-five, fifty-six on the side. Now let's try the vertical. Forty. 50, 55, 55, slid a little bit, still hanging on though, 60, 64, six, oh, we fell off the, <laughs> it fell off the table at 65. Pretty cons man. thing goes forever before it slides off and then it will just stand there almost vertical. What do we call that? Do we want to call it 64 when we slid off? Or, I mean, that is at 67 where it actually flipped over. But I'll leave it at the 64. We'll see how it does. A couple quick baseline runs with this thing with the MoFo chassis on it. Every time I bust this thing out, I always feel guilty about not using it more often because it reminds me of just how much I enjoy it and how capable it is. crushes the course. It is so wild to watch this thing go around when I haven't been using it much. It just reminds me of the capabilities of a true performance rig. So coming into the challenge lines here, which aren't much of a challenge line for this thing, as you'll see. It just crushes the escalator. The chute is just a walk in the park for this thing. Now, Hell's Gate, are you ready for this? Watch this. <laughs> Six seconds up Hell's Gate, flat as a pancake. I'm reminded that this is just by far the best performing rig that I have in my inventory. The Warthog is close, I would say, but the extra wheel speed that this has with that MoFo ROP motor really just gives it a lot more breadth of capabilities. So just got my links all built. I went with the Gladiator links. So this kit, again, 25 bucks, comes with all of the upper and lower links and also the steering links. Now it is very important to Pay attention to the rod ends, the link ends, because they are purposely misaligned and the styles are different depending on where you mount them and which links they go on. So I'm going to be linking a bunch of videos down below to Maz Design's website because he's got very detailed videos on how to assemble all of these things. So I'm not going to go in extreme 
detail on these because he's already done so and has done a great job explaining it, but I will link all that below. But it is important to pay attention to how these things are assembled because these are precision parts. He's done a great job creating these in a way that maximize performance. So it's important that you follow the directions to get these things built. So with links installed, we're in a position now to start assembling the chassis itself. Now I've got the rails out of the box. We'll get into our bag of parts here. We'll start assembling this as well. So these are our sliders. Man, the quality of these prints is insane. It is so smooth. Man, you would never know these were 3D printed. Man, this is like next level quality here. Super slippery. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to start assembling the chassis. I'll pop in and out as I'm assembling this when I get two points of interest, just to give you my thoughts and kind of highlight some of the key points during the install. But let's get to it and start assembling the chassis and then we'll start swapping things over. So I'm moving along with the chassis. I've got the skid plate installed on the frame rails. I've got the upper and lower links installed. So just a couple of items to note here. I'm noticing right off the bat that there's a whole lot of customization with this chassis kit. The skid plate itself, if you can see that, has the mounting positions for either a forward facing or a rear facing motor. So if you wanted to, or you had to due to fitment issues, you could just flip your motor around. You don't have to detach your skid to put your motor in. So that's very cool. So it's kind of like a universal fit here for the motor. With the skid plate mounting, there's a number of options for your skid plate. So you can move your skid forward and backwards by several millimeters here again for clearance and weight distribution things like that so very impressive the range of customization and i haven't even started setting the chassis up for link positions now i got this straight from maz himself so for the rear upper links put in the kind of top corner here of the rear mount and it's the opposite for the front now this was the setting that he recommended to give you that anti-squat in the back and the optimal setup in the front. So that's exactly what I've done here. The links don't use O-rings, but they still, they pivot really well on this hardware. They're attached by a small screw and a nut on the other end. I'm using blue Loctite here. Again, recommended by Maz. I've just got a little puddle here that I'm dipping my screws into and then assembling them as I go. So this is where we're at right now. The next step, I'm going to start assembling the body mounts, put the magnets in, I'll put the skids on, and then we'll start swapping things over from the build itself. So we're getting close, but here's a good, you know, kind of rough idea of the chassis and the early stages of the assembly here. Getting down to the end here, my friends, I've got the skids installed. I'm getting ready to glue my magnets into my magnet mounts, the body mounts front and back. Got the ESC tray on here. The more I'm working through this, the more I'm just imagining how many man hours went into designing this thing because the customization and the precision of these parts is just incredible. I really wanted to demonstrate some of the things here. So the ESC tray, look at the fit on that for one. If you can see, the quality of this is just outrageous, but the way this is designed it sits on the chassis and just has these sliders here. If you want it closer to the front, you just slide it. If you want it all the way back for more room, you can just slide it there. Isn't that amazing? So I want my ESC to be low. So I'm going to try to put it, I don't know, I'm trying to think in maybe right there to start. I'm thinking about how the front facing motor is going to look, but it's so incredible. Like you can just loosen those bolts slide your ESC tray to get the perfect fit for where you need your electronics. Isn't that amazing? So good. So I'm just going to tentatively put that right there. We'll tighten it up, call it good. We can tweak it later if I need to. So we're very close. Just need to get my mounts in there and then I'm going to start transferring things over. But this thing, it's very light, very strong, very rigid mighty impressive on the body mounts too on the front here 
So again, it has two options for the mount. Actually, it has more than two because you can flip this thing around if you need to, but you can raise it up or down. Just fits perfectly inside here. Just so many options to fit different bodies and work with different rigs. Really an incredible chassis here. So I'm gonna glue my magnets in and then we'll start transferring things over into this chassis. All right, my friends, let me show you where we're at. Pretty much done at this point. I am still kind of nitpicking how I want the chassis to sit and the body to mount, but I've held on to this long enough. I gotta get this video wrapped up and show you guys what this thing can do. So we're pretty much complete. What I've done here is I've put the ESC receiver combo on the tray. The motor is forward facing, which I love. Links are all installed. These links are amazing. They move and pivot extremely well everything went together super smooth look at the just the, the quality of the prints on this thing are crazy with the skids and everything on here just love it i love all the customization options that are available i think the chassis looks amazing as it sits right now i'll show you what i've been nitpicking with i feel like i'm leaving performance on the table because in order to get my body to fit i've really had to lift the chassis up in the front and I, I feel like I'm sacrificing a lot. You see, if I could get my body to work better, I could bring that whole thing down more, but I just can't do it with the cliffhanger body on here. So I'll show you what I mean. What's happening is that you know, I'm, I'm bottoming out on the servo here. So what I might end up doing is cut out more of the front so that I can sit this lower. But I think what I'll do is run it do some performance runs to see how it does as it is right now but that's what I've had to do it's still very low slung and it's got a near perfect weight distribution on it right now it's at 456 grams with the body on it it's a 60 40 split 60 percent in the front 40 in the rear I did pony up and got myself a four corner scale so now we can really get some precise measurements so this thing is nearly perfectly set up one of the things I am also still trying to figure out is where to put my battery. So, you know, I said I put my electronics up here on the tray, but that doesn't leave me any room for a battery tray. And that's one of the things that I do kind of miss about the MoFo chassis is that you had that battery tray right in the front, but I don't have that option here. So tentatively, what I've done is put some Velcro here and I'm gonna try to run one of my smaller 3S packs on the skid, which isn't ideal. So I've got to think about what to do with this. I might have to call Maz on Monday or Tuesday rather to see what he suggests for a battery. Or if any of you are familiar with the cheat code chassis, let me know in the comments what you do for batteries and electronics because I could use some advice right now. No build is perfect right out of the gate. So we've got it set up really well right now. I love how it looks. Like I said, it's incredible how it looks. The fit and finish on it is next level precision design here. The body with the body on it, even though it does sit a little higher than I like, I do think it sits better on this chassis than it did on my MoFo chassis. The whole thing sits lower, I feel. So I do like how the body sits on here. I do think it looks super gnarly. I love that big, huge MoFo servo beast hanging out of the front. I could not use the Maz steering linkage because I've got these Super 8s axles from Little Guy Racing Parts and they require their own steering linkage. But everything else is the Maz Designs setup that we did i ended up running some springs on my shocks which is a little weird if you follow my builds you know i don't usually do that but again to get my chassis leveled out and sorted out to the way that i needed it to be i had to use some springs in there so i've got some soft long travel springs in the front and then i've got some half droop springs in the back which are some 43 millimeter shocks that i cut in half to give me kind of that 
level stance on here. Overall, I think it's fantastic for a first pass at this thing. I've got lots of tweaking to do, I think, so it'll be an iterative process getting this thing sorted out. But why don't we get this on the setup table and see what our numbers are initially, and then we'll get it on the course, see how it runs. I'm super excited to check this thing out, so let's get it on the table. Let's hit up the RTI Ramp Travel Index. I did not set this up to be a flex machine by any means. It's not meant for that, so I don't expect huge gains in articulation here. I think we are just about exactly the same with this setup. 22 stayed the same on the RTI. All right, now let's get into some side hill. Forty, forty-five, fifty. Oh, fifty-four looks like. So we actually lost a little bit on the side hill. Let's try the vertical. Well, last time we couldn't even get a measurement because it would slide off the table. Fifty-five, sixty. We slid. We're still hanging on. Sixty-five. It's about sixty-nine before it topples. Here we are. Cheat code. I'm super excited for this. Running this on full power on 3S, see what this thing can do. It's got good movement, good articulation on it, I like that. The links and suspension, everything seems to move really well. This motor's jumpy. Oh, that was pretty gnarly right there. Not many of my rigs are able to make that line coming right off of that section. That was pretty impressive. Back end bucked up on me a little bit there. Could be my drag brake setting though. That was a good descent. All right, now let's get into our challenge lines here. Hit up the escalator first. Oh, this thing is snappy. Crush the escalator. Not a lot to see here on the chute, but let's do it anyway. Super flat going up there. And Hell's Gate, let's check it out. I do have it on low power mode here, so let's see. <laughs> Completely crushes Hell's Gate, no problem. Things mighty impressive. Just able to walk right up it, no issues. So I am pretty impressed with the chassis setup, and this is just a first go also. I can't imagine what we're gonna be able to get out of this thing after I do some tuning and some tweaking. Oh, this looks so good, I love it. But you know, first pass, we are as good, arguably better than we were with the MoFo chassis. So I am very impressed here. See that motor spinning in there, it looks so good. This thing is working extremely well right now. Just grip for days. 
Let's see if we can find some sort of line to really challenge this thing. There's one super gnarly hip line here where you kind of come up and over. Let's see if this thing, oh, I don't know if they can pull it off. Oh, jeez. Oh, I think it's gonna do it first attempt. It is, oh my gosh, this thing is nuts. Holy cow, so easy. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. I could have played on the course and tweaked and tuned this thing all night long. You can just go so deep into tuning this chassis. Your options for shock placements, for skid placements, body mounting, your ESC tray or battery tray mounting, however you want to do it. There's just so much functionality in this chassis. Forward-facing motor, reverse-facing motor, so, so much. So I'm thrilled with the results from the first pass at this chassis. And I'm really excited to dig into it and tune it a little more because I know that we can get a lot more out of this thing. On the setup table, we did lose a little bit on the side hill, but I feel like we gained a significant amount on the vertical. Now the vertical readings are kind of tough on my setup table because the rig just slides off before I can get a truly accurate reading. But nonetheless, it did seem to stick a little bit more. And before it toppled over backwards, we eked out some more degrees there. On the course, driving this thing around the challenge lines and the indoor course, man, it just flattens everything on the indoor course. Not only was it able to do all of our challenge lines, absolutely shred Hell's Gate, it was able to do some really challenging kind of technical, not even really challenge lines, just kind of made up bonkers lines, if you will. I was able to tackle that kind of off camber, steep hip line that I was talking about at the end there on my first pass with this chassis, which is mighty impressive. So overall, I'm very impressed with the Maz Designs components. I've always been on the fence about purchasing these or getting my hands on these just because of the price. It is a very premium kit at $95 for the chassis kit. It's hard to swallow for these little rigs, but if you're serious about performance, I would strongly encourage you to check out the Maz Designs lineup because it's evident that there has been some extreme hours sunk into this thing for R&D and testing and innovation because the performance and the customization options are second to none. But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the cheat code chassis? And like I said, if you've got any tips for how you mount your electronics, definitely let me know because I'm not super happy with how I've got mine set up right now and I know there's room for improvement. I'm going to put the links in the description down below as well for all of the components on the comp build as well as the brand new Maz Design components that we've put on here. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I will see you in the next video.